Hello guys, uh, I'm back with another uh, toy photography vlog. Um, I've got a few I'm going to do today. I've got um, Dark Father, which is this one. Um, just got him. Lighting's a bit off because I'm in a dark corner. Um, lighting's behind me, so. Um, got this guy. I'm uh, going to do a review of him as well, but I thought I'd do the photos for him and vlog it at the same time. Got Deadpool, and I've also got Deathstroke here. I'm going to do like Deadpool versus um, Deathstroke type um, shot. I'm going to use some of this today, Atmosphere Aerosol. Um, I was going to do like an outside um, shot with this, but it's actually quite windy. So um, I'm just going to do a nice easy indoor shot with it. Works just as well. I've got the little trigger fin for it as well. Haven't used it in a long time, so um, it'll be fun to try and use it again um does it 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 can work well it can it, it sometimes is a bit hard to work with um you need the right lighting for it to show up but um i'll go through that when we when we um do it um i've also got a few new um little accessories i've got this tiny little tripod i mean it like fits in my hand all right very small um good for lights and for the phone I'm gonna put, cause I'm recording on my phone, I'm gonna put that on there so then I've got hands free to use the camera. Um, I've also got another tripod that I got uh, the other day, it's a larger one, which I'm hoping to use when, you know, it's not as windy and go outside and do some shots. Um, it's a National um, Geographic one, um, like a large tripod. So we'll see what that's like. Um, using that outside and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got my camera set up um, with uh, the trigger thing, like button today. Um, just trying to make it more hands-free. It's a lot easier when it's when you've got more hands to do stuff. Um, and then we've got the lights as well that we normally use, the small rig um, lights. One of them's run out of battery just as I started recording. So, uh, that's always great. But yeah, so I'm going to set up and then I'll be back um, with the dark father shot first. So as you can see, I've got him set up um, just here. And then I've got the light over here, uh, just the other side of the camera. Um, as you can see, there's like a mist um, happening at the moment. I've just sprayed some just to test it. Um, so basically, you shoot it from just in front of the light, like that and you can see it goes around. So um, that's why it's always good to have one of these um, when you're doing these types of shots, because then you've got hands free where you can just kind of focus the camera in and take the shot. There we go. So obviously I'll show you what it looks like on the camera once I've, once I've finished. Gives off that nice mist effect. It means you don't have to add it in post as well, which I normally do anyway. But uh... there you go. So that looks really nice. So oh, it's just gone off the camera. I'll bring that back up. But yeah, as you can see, it's um that sort of effect it gives off. It does stay there for a while. You just have to brush it around a little bit. Um. It doesn't leave a residue. It's really good stuff, actually. It, it, if you spray too much of it, it will, it will, um, like set on stuff and and on your lens and that. Just to, all you have to do is wipe it off. It's completely non-toxic as well, I believe. Um, so you can spray as much of it as you like, and it doesn't really, it doesn't set off any smoke alarms. So that's always good. So um, yeah, so that's dark father shot. I just thought I'd show um, me using atmosphere. atmosphere atmosphere aerosol um for a shot because i haven't done it in uh in one of the vlogs yet so um that's always a good thing uh show you different things and stuff like that so gonna show you how that came out on the camera and then um and then we'll go on to the uh, deathstroke and deadpool shot so i'll be with you in two seconds so here it is on the camera as you can see it's, it's a bit of reflection but you'll see it in when we do the edit as well as you can see around his feet that's all like the um 
right around here is where all the aer aerosol is. So yeah, you'll see it better in um, in in the edit when we do that. So um, yeah, let's move on to Deadpool. We're back outside um, in the garden again. Um, it was sunny, uh, but now it's not. So uh, got uh, it's windy as well. Got um, Deathstroke here. Um, but Deadpool. Um, it's really windy, really annoying. Um, the minute you want to start doing um, like videos and stuff, it, it gets like this. So this is a new tripod that I got. Um, National Geographic one. It's really small, compact. Um, it out. Comes in a nice little bag as well. But yeah. So that's how small it is and it extends right up um where is it yeah so it goes up like that as well and then you can also extend it on the legs so really nice and compact easy to um carry around as well so hopefully we can do some shots with that at some point um outside not might go on a walk or something do some outdoor shots but um it comes with like a phone holder as well which is useful um and then one of those joint ones as well I forget what they're called it comes with a few little bits so just going to set up um deadpool and uh deathstroke and then i'll come back and uh, i'll show you them set up so here they are i've got them set up um Finally, the sun's come back out. But, um, problem is with with um, DC and Marvel Legends is that they're very different sizes. So you've got to kind of take that into account. This one, it doesn't look too bad on camera. Um, it's, it's not too bad at all, but um, sometimes it can look really out of proportion. So you just got to bear in mind. Um, Deathstroke, that gun he's got a p90 um that's part of the dc uh the mcfarlane accessories pack just in case you're wondering um but yeah so that's them set up and then we'll take a shot and i'll uh, show you afterwards so i've set them up again uh, a little bit differently um i've got uh, deadpool's obviously won this fight um i'm gonna do this portrait shot as well so um yeah, the sun's come out, so it's it's a bit better now for the lighting. But you could probably can't see it on the camera. No, you can't. But yeah, so I'll show you afterwards in um, in the edit. But that's them set up. Might get some of the atmosphere aerosol out if um, if it, the wind can keep it in place for long enough. But yeah, so that's them. And then once we've taken these, I'll uh, see you in the edit. Hello, guys, and we're back in the. Um, Photoshop um, so we've done our like all those shots and stuff so the landscape one that I did of um, Deathstroke and Deadpool um, didn't turn out as well as I wanted it to so we've only got the three um, from that shoot so we've got the Dark Father one here we've got um, Deadpool uh, teabagging uh, Deathstroke and then we've got um, him shooting him as well so as you can see the atmosphere aerosol on here is all around this bottom half and then on this one is all around this part as well it just gives that depth effect as well I mean it means you don't have to add it in post I mean you can add you, you can add stuff um, in, in post but uh, it, it the atmosphere aerosol it just it just adds that depth to a, to a shot so uh, on this one there's not much editing to do um, so what I'm going to do is I'm skip over this one and I'll go on to like this one and this one because on my last um, photography vlog I had some comments um, asking how I got rid of the stand because um, I didn't show myself getting rid of some of the flight stand around the leg I got rid of it around the outside um, so I'll, I'll just show it on this so obviously flight stands are a lot a lot bigger are a lot bigger than um, the wire that I use um, this is the, the wire that I use is just aluminium wire so I mean it's a lot better to get this to stand a figure than it is to um, like you can't really use this for flying and stuff like you need to get a flight stand for that so 
um, on here you just use the spot healing brush tool uh, over here on the left um, try and make sure it's it's the same sort of size as the wire you don't want it like being too big or too small because you'll end up with it either side um, and then you can just click away and I always do it in little little chunks first um, just so it doesn't get rid of too much and then you just slowly work your way through like that so these are the bits that you could probably struggle with is where there's joints now when I do this I often get rid of the um, joint um, what's it the the gap in the leg sorry um, to get rid of like the joints and stuff like that it, it just makes the figure look better sometimes when you do that but as you can see it, as it's done here it's kind of got rid of that line that seam line which can be quite annoying um, but when you zoom out well it doesn't notice see that there you go I just did it there so we have to make this smaller uh, go to there you can also use the um, what's it the fill tool as well but it doesn't that doesn't always work very well so you don't it is annoying when it just grabs random parts that aren't anywhere near what you're um, you're doing. Like that. So you don't. You can notice it here, where it's it's um, grabbed that seam line, which is really annoying. So what we'll do is I normally I'll just zoom back in. I normally just grab here like that. Control J. No, I literally like. I'm no Photoshop expert. I just do what I find easiest, and then just drag it down. Add that scene back in, and then afterwards we can merge them. Those layers, and then we can just make this a little bit smaller, right like there, and we can just go around like that and blend it in a little bit more. And then it adds that seam back in to that area. There we go. So it's that easy, really. I mean, it it can it can take a while sometimes, especially flight stands. They do take a while. Um, but as I'm just blending this in a little bit better, um, getting rid of that lighting because it makes it look a bit weird. Right. So as you can see the flight stand is also behind him as well. So that will be a lot easier to get rid of because there's nothing behind it. You just do that and it's gone. So when you've got no detail, um you've got some of it here actually, there you go. No, it's just sword. Won't do that. Um as like when you've got more detail around the figure and you've got a flight stand or a or wire to get rid of, it can be really annoying to try and get rid of that wire without like damaging the actual shot like the figure and stuff like that but as you can see we've managed to get rid of it there so we'll move on to this one which is going to be a similar like sort of thing but always it always helps as well if you can try and get the flight stand or not the flight stand I keep saying flight stand wire um, behind the figure um, like this that I have here, you've got less to get rid of. Um, if you've got it to the side or next to it, you've got more chance of it um, going over the rest of the um, shot. So try and make it, try and get it so it's behind the figure, and it makes it a lot easier for you to get rid of in edit. So you can see, we just go through this again. I mean, it can take some getting used to and it does take time like you know to try not to just rush it if you're struggling getting rid of a part like this bit I'm trying to do it so it's not going to damage around the figure but it might be a bit hard to do you can also play around with um, the proximity match and stuff like that it makes it a little bit like blurrier and weird but content aware is the one I always use 
Um, but you can play around with what you want, really. I find it's always a lot easier to get rid of uh, the wires and stuff on a black when it's on black background um, rather than coloured because black's a lot easier to blend with stuff whereas colour can be very difficult sometimes like that, alright I'm going to sort this bit out now we've got rid of it off his arm alright, there you go it's there we'll just go over this bit here And then we'll get rid of it just behind like that. There we go. So yeah, that's getting rid of a flight stand. Um, for this one, I'm going to add some effects in as well. So I'll bring them up. They are. I've got them all like. I've got a load of effects stored, like gunshots and stuff like that. Um, so here's a gunshot. And basically. All you have to do is make it small enough and place it over where the gun is. So it's shooting there, so you do that. Like that. And come out. And there we go, you've got a gunshot. That's easy as that. And then we can, might be able to add some blood effects in there. Let's try and see if we can get a a blood sp spray or something there you go so I've got I've got effects for everything I mean it's always good to use effects when you can um, so as you can see a bullet will be coming through there so we've got to add the spray here that the one I'm gonna blur it in a minute um then we'll come on, just get a small one coming out of where the bullet's going in like that right and then we blur them so we do filter no we don't we do filter blur and then motion blur and we do it to the angle that the bullet is at. I don't know, is that coming up on your screen? Yeah, it is. Um, we just lower it down a little bit. Like that. So I might not do blow. I'll do blow on the other one, actually. And then we'll do something else for the other one. I literally, I don't even plan most of my um, edits. I just kind of... I've done Gaussian Blur on that, actually. That actually looks better. Um... I don't. I don't plan. I just. I just do it as I go along. A lot of the time. I mean, I, I often have a shot in my head that I want to do, um, but I'll wing it on the day because planning it just makes it feel like a job. Like when you get too serious with um, toy photography and stuff like that, it, it just becomes a bit boring. Um, and it becomes like you've got to do it, you've got to do a chore and, and it's just always um, just wing it, just take a few figures out and if you can get a shot with them you can get a shot with them, if you can't you can't um, I've I've never, I, I when I first started I was like alright I've got to do this shot, I've got to do that shot and now I just do what I want um, makes it so much more fun uh, and I've always been a fan of doing like the, the gory shots, the violent shots. Um, I've always done them. Um, I just find there's a little bit more to them. You know what I mean? When instead of just standing there. So there you go. So that's the shot there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save them all and then we'll go into Lightroom uh, like we normally do and do the lighting edits so I'll be back in a second so here we are back um, and we're in Lightroom uh, so this is the Dark Father one um, that we did um, so this figure I've got uh, a review coming out of um, 
shoot shortly. Um, I, obviously, I had to get the rest of the um, the Batman Death Metal um, figures to get it. So for this one, I'm going to lower the exposure slightly, contrast, turn up always. Um, shadows turned down, blacks turned down. So I only took this shot really for the review that I've got coming out because um, I needed to do one for the thumbnail, um, which is also a good thing really. When you when you when you're doing toy photography and stuff, um, it's always good to. Uh, um, have a reason to do a shot like these toy photography vlogs are really good for me now because it gives me um, it makes me talk about what I'm doing meaning I end up spending more time on the shot so uh, this one obviously you didn't see me add the effects and stuff in but that's the effects I've added in um, it's like one that's taken after the, um, the, the one where you're shooting them sort of thing so just a low contrast really for that one, it didn't really need too much. And then on this one, this one's probably my favourite one, I really like this. Um, exposure will lower slightly, contrast will turn up. Shadows turn down, blacks turn down. So yeah, um, so that's the shots done. Uh, I hope you enjoy these uh, Toy Photography vlogs, uh, they do quite well actually and um, you know, and I I will continue to do them um, for as long as I can. They, they, um, I do want to do one that's um, out and about. I want to go on a walk and, and do some shots, but it's it's been hit and miss. Like when I've been off work, it's it's been either raining or it's been really windy, so I can't really do it when it's when it's super windy because standing and some of you probably know standing a figure when it's really windy is very hard. And also, if I'm recording a video, you'll hear the wind and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, I do want to do one that's um, out and about and that. But um, for the next one, I'm not sure what one, what what figures I want to do yet. So that'll probably be in a, a few weeks or something. But um, until then, um, I'll have some reviews coming out. I've got Catwoman coming out on. It should already be out actually when this goes out. It should already be out. Um, Catwoman, um, and then Dark Father will be at some point as well. Uh, don't forget to head over to uh, Toy Photography UK as well, um, where we do uh, weekly or well, bi weekly themes and stuff. Uh, if you're from the UK, join that. Um, so, yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye. If only I could go back in time, I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright. Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like. And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime. Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life. A few friends with intent can help you feel alive. Find a passion, take some action, and with the